can just skip right to the presentation. Yeah. Okay. okay, good afternoon guys. It's uh, 1 o'clock. I was supposed to be speaking to you at 11 a.m. So I can understand if you're sleepy. I can understand if you're hungry. But uh, my promise to you is we're going to take 20 minutes and I hope to make a mark and I hope that what you listen to today, what you hear today will actually have some bearing on your business in the next 12 months. Are you all ready? Yes. Okay. Good. I actually see some heads nodding. Okay. Here we go. In the morning, before we began, uh, before I began uh, speaking, I've, I've been listening to all the sessions. I think there were some very interesting points. In the first session, we listened to uh, all the stuff about sustainability and renewal and stuff. In the second session, uh, we listened to how networking is very important. We actually listened to how personal networks are super important. I think it's one of the things that frequently keeps getting missed. People start talking of social media more frequently than they talk about personal networks. And if you look around at some of the stalwarts in the industry, some of the veterans here, their personal networks are super strong. So if you're starting out now, and you're here maybe in the first five years of your career, please understand that that counts far more than what your social media follower count is. I'll agree with what uh, Bhavnesh, my friend said. He said, don't buy follower counts. I'd rather extend that and say, go build a personal network. That's worth your time, that's worth its weight in gold, right? So that was uh, one interesting thing. The other thing that we listened to was valuation of companies. That was also interesting. I went and changed my presentation because uh, I didn't know that we were talking about our education, so I actually added a small bit saying I'm also educated. So let's go, let's get started. So uh, I'm Joshua. I, I could start off by telling you I'm an international award winner in photography. Uh, it's cute, but it doesn't tell the full story. I could also tell you I'm a business school grad. Um, I went to XLRA 17 years ago. So I've been using everything I've learned and I'm trying to implement it uh, wherever I go. I could also tell you, you know, I get to say that I've worked with Marvel, but that's not the reason I'm actually here. Uh, I can also casually slip in and say, catch me on Netflix, but that's also not what I'm here for. The reason I'm here is because my brother Joseph Radhik and I built a small brand called uh, Stories by Joseph Radhik. This is about nine years ago and uh, by God's grace, we've gotten to be in the thick of things in the wedding industry. These are the kind of images we make, these are the kind of people we get to shoot. Uh, I would say that we make exquisite, iconic wedding photos. And that's not a small claim to make because our work has actually traveled the world. Uh, frequently our work looks stunning and out of this world. Uh, this is actually in Hyderabad. Abu Jain Sandeep Kosla designed this. Uh, this is for a bride and groom. They're standing right there. Uh, frequently our work takes us into spaces that are new and exciting. Right. So here's a wedding that we shot uh, that also got featured on Netflix. Uh, our work is frequently emotional, but then we all know that weddings are emotional. I would rather not stand here and tell you what weddings are about because you guys know what weddings are all about. Our work's also dramatic in many ways. When Insider.com did a listing of uh, the global best wedding photos for the last decade, from 2010 to 2020, uh, two of our photos were in that list, and this is one of those photographs. And uh, let me move forward. Our work is also frequently funny and quirky uh, because wedding photos do not need to be serious. They do need to tell a story though. They need to tell a story that actually speaks of and speaks to the bride and groom that you're shooting. This one just got displayed in an art gallery in Hyderabad. Uh, one of our photographers, Lithika, who shot it, she won an award for this. Uh, our work is also a celebration of Indian culture. I think that's something that we have, we have really been blessed with. Guys, this is not the presentation, this is just an introduction, so don't check out mentally. The actual presentation is starting in about 60 seconds. Okay, so uh, I'm just setting context to what we're actually going to talk about. Our work frequently celebrates Indian culture, and I think that's something I heard from all the panelists today and all the speakers today. We get an opportunity to take Indian culture out into the world. Uh, here's an image that Sony used for their advertisement for one of their uh, Alpha series cameras in Europe. So that's the kind of impact you, you know, uh, our work can have. And our photos have been seen on Jimmy Kimmel, James Corden, even Oprah. Our work has been published everywhere. Uh, let me just move forward. You might have seen some of our work even if you don't know who we are. And our work collectively has crossed about 500 million views so far. Uh, yes, so who are we? We are the 
we are the people who have actually put a face and a name to Indian weddings over the last decade. Uh, and I come to you with this experience. I come to you with this experience of about nearly 500 weddings in the last nine years in 36 countries around the world. All this to tell you that uh, the next 15 minutes should be interesting because they come from learned experience. They don't come out of a textbook. So everything that I have learned with regard to two things, how I understand price and how I understand competition. That's literally what I'm going to talk about. I will not waste your time on anything else. Are you all with me? Yes. Okay, exciting. Let's play a game. Okay, can I have two volunteers? Kainas will call me. I have you. And then I'll call, uh, let's pick somebody. Lord. Let's, let's have you. Then, yes, yes. Can you guys come up for just a quick minute? Yeah. So I was having a conversation with uh, Mithun, I think, from the Exedo team. And we were talking about how so much of price and product is about economics and behavioral economics and all these fancy stuff, right? But we should think in complicated terms. We should try to simplify our world and bring it down to its essence. And I think that's where the true answers lie. So here's a small, small exercise, okay? So you guys, right, I've got uh, Prashant, I've got you, right? So both of you here on stage, I'm going to ask simple questions. The questions are going to, they are, we're basically going to show some information upon the slide and you'll potentially have to give an answer, yeah? I don't even know what you guys do. Let me just like, for the audience, I'll say you guys, I don't know what you guys do. I just know that you're in the wedding industry. I know you're experts. So you know at least this much. If you were selling this, how much would you charge for this? I'm giving you no further information. Okay. Yep. yep. Can we have the mic on? Yep. If I was selling this, this stool. Yep. Put a price. First thing that comes to mind. No wrong answers. Go for it. Price now? Huh. That was 350. 350 rupees. Okay, are you all with me? He's got 350 rupees on the board. How much do you have? Thousand. She'd sell it for a thousand bucks, he would sell it for 350 bucks. Okay? So I'm gonna add a piece of information on the slide and we'll see if it changes anything. First up it's a stool. Okay. So far so good. Does that change your answer? No. No. So thousand bucks, three fifty rupees. They're all in Indian rupees. Next piece of information. It's made of redwood bark. Now redwood bark actually comes from the Sequoia Forest down in uh, Southern California. The trees are like super old, so ecological disaster if you cut them down. So you can never cut them down. They only have to fall over by themselves and when it falls, you chop off a piece and then you potentially make the stool. How much would you sell this for now? The price has just gone up. The price has just gone up? Okay. <laughs> How much? How much? X. Give me a number. So he went from 350 rupees to 10x, he went to 3500. In that ratio, 20,000. 20,000. So we got it at 20,000 and 3,500. Are you all with me? We're keeping track. Next piece of information. Yeah. It's sold only at auction. What is the rental price? Yeah. Sorry. I think we went way Okay. It's sold only at auction. Only the, uh, let's only talk about the auction bit. It's sold only at auction. We'll 10x that again. So she was at, uh, how much was she at? She was at 20,000 before, so it's now going to become 2 lakhs. How about you? Is that her history? It's the same stool. It's the same stool. Nothing's changed. So she's at uh, 2 lakhs and he's at 10,000. Okay, next piece of information, it's sold at an Italian furniture store in South Bombay. Okay, so an Italian furniture store in South Bombay, context is all the couches cost 7 lakhs to 70 lakhs. That's the price range of the Italian furniture store. You know those kind of stores. So if the stool is being sold there, what does it do to the price? You are at 2 lakhs. Yeah, yeah. so we bring it up to 7 lakhs. She's bringing it up to 7 lakhs. Okay, so you, where are you, are you going to throw the price up? 
he is also going to move the price up. Okay. Next piece of information might either add to this or it might contradict already you know the stuff that we already know, right? It sold at IKEA. If it sold at IKEA, what does it do to your price? Now? It brings it down to three fifty. <laughs> it's come down from six lakhs down back to three fifty. Okay, good. And uh, is it going to do anything to your price? It's going to bring it down. Yeah, it's, you're going to keep it wherever. So, the last piece of information I want to give you is that this this tool is available on Urban Ladder at two thousand rupees, and you're working at Pepper Fry. So you need to put a price on this. How much would you say? This is two thousand rupees on Urban Ladder. Nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Okay, we're good. Thank you guys. Thank you for actually participating. Thanks for all the answers. Yeah. Uh, what did we learn from this? What did we learn from this? I think if you just play this exercise with your team, which we have done, my team's here with me from sales, and we've played this exercise back in stories, it's very interesting to see that the intrinsic worth of this tool, the actual worth of this tool has not changed in the entire exercise. The tool was the tool. It did not move an inch to the left or to the right or to the top or the bottom. But the value, the price that you thought you would charge for it, just kept changing because of something interesting that was happening. What is happening? Some content. Somebody said content. Anything else? Brand positioning, a bunch of things, right? Okay. Perception change. Okay. Perception change. Marketing change. A lot of things. Again, like I'm saying, I like to keep things extremely simple. So let's move forward. I think. Most people let their peers and their competitors decide their pricing. One of the key and important things that I saw in this example was when I told her that Urban Ladder is charging two thousand. She went to what? Ninety-nine lakh. That's interesting because it had nothing to do with the value of the stool. It didn't have to do anything with her as a brand. It only had to do with what the competition was doing. It's like if you get to own. Right? Let's say Rocky Man here. Let's say she gets to own her favorite sports car. It's apparently in red. And it looks like a toy. Not my fault. Okay? So it's there. You know, she's she's bought her favorite sports car. It's in red. But then she's told that she can't actually control the steering wheel. Right? That someone sitting outside the car will control the steering wheel, and all she has access to is the accelerator and the brake. Would you buy a car like that? No. But very frequently at our companies, at our organizations, with the products and services that we sell, with the brands that we build, we let our competition control our price. So I'm going to give you three big thoughts on uh, three big truths and thoughts on pricing. First is, I think we need to repeat this to ourselves that we are in control. Uh, I've gotten an opportunity over the course of the last decade to meet over a thousand entrepreneurs in the small business space, especially in the wedding space, and. One of the common things that I get to hear is, you know what? You're based in Bombay. You don't know our struggles. You don't know where we are from. You don't know my city. You don't know how they control everything. But you need to take back control to actually have some control of your own life, right? First up, you have control over your price and over your brand and over your company. The second is, price needs to change over time. This is a core truth. How many of you have an iPhone here? Wow, good. How many of you are paying the same price you paid for an iPhone ten years ago? Zero people, right? So if you're willing to fork out money to someone else every year, more and more, because you know, price changes with time, the question that I would ask you is, how has your price changed over time? And this is the core truth about pricing. We are not selling idlis at an UDP restaurant. They can't all be priced at ten rupees forever, right? So we'll have to we'll have to focus on that. That's number two. By the way, if you like something that you hear, uh, you can snap your fingers. So at least I know that you're all here with me. Number three, okay? Yeah, you're not selling idlis is an important part, uh, point to uh, keep in your mind. The third thing is interesting. I believe that most entrepreneurs do not understand price. That has two implications. One, I'm saying even I don't understand price. I'm saying you don't understand price. But more importantly. When one of your competitors does something smart with price, and you sit in the office and say, "Wow, that guy is really smart. He's changed something. I should change my price because of him." Have you thought that in India? You've thought that someone is doing something smart. Most people don't understand price, right? So this is something for us to understand so that we build our own approach towards pricing. Okay? What should our own approach be? I said I won't waste your time. So let's jump right into it. 
how should we think of price? I'm going to need a quick volunteer uh, since she's actually having a conversation. I'm going I'm to pull her on stage. Since you're having a conversation, I'll pull you on stage. Come. Very simple example. And I hope that you'll take this example back to your teams and ask them what they think. Hi, what's your name? Mansa. Thanks, Mansa, for joining in. Mansa has got a break. Where are you from, Mansa? Bangalore. Bangalore. Mansa has got a break from work. She has decided to go to Paris in November. It's very cold. Don't go. Okay. But uh, she decided to go anyways. Okay. She's walking along uh, the Eiffel Tower and she's got night plans for, you know, with friends. She's got a party. And she sees a painter there. Mansa, you see a painter there. Okay. And the painter says, can I make a painting of you? And you tell him that you don't have time because you've got you know, plans in the night. And he says, I only need seven minutes. Right. Okay. Seven minutes, you're like, okay, I can give seven minutes. She can give seven minutes, right? Absolutely. For a painting. So she sits, sits down. The Eiffel Tower is behind her. The painter starts to work. He's done painting. So you say, how much should I pay you? The painter says, pay attention. The painter says, the canvas cost me $10. The frame cost, the painting, the paint itself cost me $5. So total is how much? 15. My margin is 30%. How much is that? 30% means how much? 5 more dollars. Total he says, Mansa, give me $20. Is that a fair price? No. Why is that not a fair price? His talent and His time. talent and time and stuff like that. But it's difficult to put a value to it. But if he said $20, you would say yes, right? It's a good deal. I mean, I'll be very happy. You'll be happy. Yeah. $15 plus $5 is $20. Sounds very logical and rational to me. Here's a piece of information I'll give you, just like I did earlier with uh, my, my friends earlier. The painter is Picasso. Oh. Okay, interesting. Nothing changed about, about the entire exercise. It's still seven minutes. Right. It didn't take more than seven minutes. Why did you say who when I said it was Picasso? I think I would faint. You would faint? That's number one. Yeah. Second, would you still think $20 is a fair price? Not at all. Not at all? Yeah. Why would you say that? Because of who he is. Because of who he is, because of his experience, because of uh, his talent and his skill. Everything about him. Uh, but he only spent 7 minutes, right? 7 minutes is $20, sounds okay. No? Right, but the experience that he has From is all much... All his life's yeah. work that yeah. allowed him to actually create this in 7 minutes counts for something? Absolutely. Thank you, Mansa. You Thank you. Point. Thank you. Interesting. Now, the number of times I ask a wedding fraternity entrepreneur, how your pricing is done and they tell me it is cost plus margin. It's my cost plus margin. I start to have nightmares because I've heard so many people tell me this. This is how much it costs, this is what the margin is. Right? I disagree and I disagree vehemently because it does not account for your experience, for your time, for your talent and for your skill. If you agree that those things should be part of your price, give me a round of applause. our pricing is flawed if you start thinking in terms of cost plus margin. So what should the price be, right? I said we will not waste time. So let's jump into a quick example. In fact, uh, my shades are over there. My shades are in my bag. Can you get me my shades? <coughs> uh, small example. Third example and that's it. After this, no more exercises. Very straightforward. Uh, you found it? Okay. So what is this item worth? I've got Karima here. She's just going to hand over this thing to me. Okay, so I've got, a, I've got a pair of shades in this box. What is this pair of shades worth? I'm telling you nothing. I'm just saying a pair of shades. It's got UV protection. It is polarized. Sorry? Oh, you can see the... You can... You know the box. Okay. Interesting. What did you say? Depends on the brand. Oh, that's interesting. You didn't say how much plastic went into this, which is how cost plus works. Right? But that's how we value our businesses, we value our product. We are cost plus ho sakta hai. Margin is ke upar lagega, right? Uh, for those who don't speak Hindi, I was saying this is the only way pricing can be done and uh, you will justify it. In fact, you will, you will argue with me. You will tell me I don't understand your work. You will tell me I don't understand the city you come from. You will tell me I don't understand your competition. But the minute I flash this box, you're like, what is the brand? Let me, let, tell me what the brand is and I'll start with the price. Interesting. Very interesting. Remind me not to forget that there, okay? Thanks, guys. So the price could be anywhere from $10 to $1,000, and all that matters is the question you asked. So then what is price? Price is perceived value. If you're gonna take a picture, take a picture of this, 
go back to your team and tell them this because I think our teams should know what we do for a living. They need to appreciate what we're doing for a living for them and for all of us, right? Price is about perceived value and then two words I've highlighted here. Perceived and value and we'll talk about both of them. It is never directly about the cost of items sold. It's never about the cost of production, right? I think it's a, it's a, a misunderstanding that we need to get past and today is a good day to start. Yeah, the 20th of September uh, of 2022 in Bangalore. So here's my epiphany, right? I spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff. Uh, my brother Joseph Radik and the incredible team at Stories, they are the ones who work on the creative aspect of the work. I just get to sit here and like, you know, think about this stuff. So here's an epiphany I had literally last week. Price is equal to cost plus something. And I've been trying to narrow this down for the last decade and I think I finally have it and I want to share it with you. I think price is cost plus information. If you notice, on the first game that we played, all that I did was change the information and the price kept jumping. It went up, it went down, it went sideways, it got confused. So price is cost plus information. The cost bit is important because you need to recover your cost. You paid 10 rupees to actually make this happen, I want to get my 10 rupees back. But the information is where you actually make your money. Does that make sense? And if we don't have this understanding, we're not going to make a lot of money. That's my simple conclusion. Okay, let's move forward to the next part. We talked about value. Let's talk about perception. Price is about perceived value. Now, perceptions are built in our, in our customer base by competent, compelling, consistent storytelling. We have to tell our story in a compelling fashion. Right? It has to be exciting, it has to be memorable, it has to be competent, it has to be efficient, it has to be useful, that's number two. The third thing, consistent. All the people who tell me they're slacking on social media because I'm not feeling like it, all the people who tell me, you know, we did some marketing some two years back, we're good now, we're good, business is very good. So, if, yeah, exactly, we're, we're okay, we're doing well, post-pandemic boom, it's all good. The thing is, and the interesting part here is, if you don't tell your story, someone else will. Okay? So what does it say up there? It says, beware, perceptions are built whether you tell the story or not. Again, let me go back to something I told you first. What did I tell you? You are in control. You are, if you want to remain in control, you tell your story. Is that fair? Yeah? So marketing, brand building, social media, they're all tools, networking, meeting new people for the first time, meeting your friends again, they're all opportunities to consistently tell your story because if you don't do it, someone else is going to tell your story for you. Okay. Uh, did you like this bit about cost plus information? Did you like it? I don't think it tells a full story and I hate presentations and I hate books and I hate YouTube videos and stuff like that that just leave the information hanging there. So I thought let me just elaborate on this and spend literally five minutes. I'm watching my time because I don't want to waste your time. Five minutes, in the next five minutes, we'll try and elaborate upon the word information on that slide. So let's move forward. Price is cost plus information. What information could you give your customers to change their perception of price? Okay, I put it into four buckets. I hope this is useful for you. I put it in such a way that you can actually take a picture of it once you're done. Uh, I don't know if the team has done the prints. Okay, so yeah, you can take a picture once the entire slide is filled out. First up, the information that we need to give is what the product is, what does it do for you, how is it better, uh, you know, how good is it, how much better the product is. For example, for the sunshades, I would say it's 99% UV protection, it's 100% polarized, and that makes a difference because you can then instantly compare it to something else that says 95% polarized, and then your perception of price goes up. Is that fair? Simple enough? So when you talk of your product and your service in your business, are you actually talking about how good your product is, right? We're all stuck in our, uh, you know, we need to be humble, we need to be modest. Uh, we can't actually you know, tell the truth in that fashion, but tell the truth sometimes about your product. It might help build a strong perception of price. The second bit is provenance. Where is it from? For example, that, that uh, sunshades are from Italy, and I think that makes a difference in my perception of price. Uh, the fact that we are from India actually can drive up price. I can tell you that because I work from India and I've worked in, we're about to work in our 37th country globally, right? And the fact that we are exporting talent from India is a big deal. 
uh, I loved the second presentation of the day today where uh, he was telling us that India is not just our, our only playground, the world is our playground. I completely believe that and I think where you're from is a strong story. I met uh, a couple of gentlemen yesterday from Udaipur, uh, I don't know if they're still here, a uh, couple of planners, yes, that's a strong story for you. You come from a place of heritage and culture and you know, uh, wealth and beauty, that's part of your story and I think you need to own it, that's one. Second, craftsmanship, who made it? You all know Sabi Sachi and there is Lengas, right? Sabi Sachi, uh, the brand for wedding wear for brides. There is a price difference between whether he stitches it or whether his team member stitches it and I think that's only fair. So, who works on this, who the craftsman is, is an important part of the story. So, I don't know if we're telling that story strongly enough. I don't know if we even know who's working on our, uh, on our sets and, our, and on our work. So, that's something for us to think about. Third is heritage, what the history is. So I have a hankering, uh, I'm hankering after a Porsche this year. Kidding, maybe not. Maybe I'm kidding, maybe I'm not. But let's say I want to buy a Porsche this year and I walk into the showroom and they show me the Panamera. Okay, lovely car, four doors, love it. If I were to ask that guy, hey, how much sheet metal went into this? What is the cost of the sheet metal? He'd probably ask me to walk out because it makes no sense, right? Because the cost of the sheet metal in a Porsche Panamera has nothing to do with the price of the car because the price of the car has to do with this. It has to do with heritage and history of the brand. So people like uh, you who have spent three decades in the industry, people, even if you spent half a decade in the industry, that's part of your heritage and you need to own it as part of your story because that drives perception of price. Is that fair? I'll pitch it the other way. If you're brand new, how many of you are one year old or less in the wedding industry? Anybody here? That's you. If I were you, I would go tell the world, I have a fresh perspective. You know those old people? They don't know anything. They've been here for far too long. I'm fresh, I'm new. So it's all about how you're going to work with your story to really um, craft the narrative. Third bucket, who buys it? I find it very interesting that the minute I show Priyanka Chopra's photo uh, anywhere, people's perception of my price goes up. That's lovely. I love it. That's why I love showing that photo. <laughs> Uh, the thing is, who else buys that product tells a lot to a prospective customer about what your potential value is and whether the price is fair or not, right? So I don't know if we hide our clients behind NDAs and I don't know if we hide our clients behind lackluster social media presence and I don't know if we hide our clients in dusty albums in our offices that we never show. But who else buys this product is a very important marker that drives up price. Are you with me? Okay, where it is sold and how it is sold is very important. Did you notice how their reaction in the first exercise uh, changed when I said it was sold at auction? Did you see that? You're, the minute I said it's auction, you said 10x. You said 10x, right? You went from uh, 20,000 to about 2 lakhs or something. Very interesting. So how are you selling it? Where are you selling your products? Very important. You need, so an address matters. Uh, an address matters both in a physical sense and in terms of social media and online sense. Your your address matters. Uh, what that place looks like also matters. Interestingly, how scarce it is also matters. How rare is it? How many of you here uh, work only 10 weddings a year or less? Show of hands. Lovely. Okay, the three people here. Four, five. I see a few hands. So I famously work only 35 weddings a year. That's what Stories does. We do 35 weddings a year. We say no to the 36 client. Yeah, not because we can't, but because we don't want to. Because we want to make sure that we're delivering exquisite, iconic levels of quality. What does it mean in practice for my price? When I actually make the sale, I'm able to tell a bride, your bride number 27, I literally have eight more slots left in the year. Does that make sense? So, if you are selling only 10 times a year or 5 times a year, I would let the bride know that she is bride number 7 and there are only 3 more brides left this year. Which is a very interesting thing. Psychologically, it does a lot to the perception of price. So, turn your weakness into your strength. The fact that I do 35, I have a friend here who does uh, hundreds of weddings. Where is he? My friend from Hyderabad, I can't see him. But okay, he does, uh, he does hundreds of weddings, right? So I could say I'm weak and he's strong, or I could say I turn my weakness into a strength. So that's uh, something for you to think about. Right? Either you're in trouble or they're in trouble. You figure out which one, okay? Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. This is my entire uh, you know, discussion on information. I believe that most entrepreneurs never realize most of this. You end up 
figuring this out over the course of a couple of decades of mistakes. But if I get an opportunity to share it with you, I will. Here I am sharing this with you. If you can take a picture of this, this will actually hold you in good stead. Do we have five more minutes for a last thought on competition? Are you all with me? Because I know that hunger is coming closer, but uh, I will get louder. Okay, move the mic closer to myself. Uh, before I go, I'm sorry to say, I, I hate this line, but I, I figured I'd put it on the slide. Sorry to say, but your product's worth is very frequently affected by your self worth. Is that fine? I don't think that's a bad thing. I think all of us deal with anxiety. I think uh, all of us deal with uh, questions of how good we are or how much better the other guy across the across the pond is or the other girl across the other continent is, right? Everybody's anxious, everybody's got issues. But then, if you let your self-worth issues dictate your brand's worth and your product's worth, you're doing yourself, your brand, and your team a massive disservice. Right? So one thing to keep in mind is that we need to have a little bit of objectivity. Post this session, I'd love to chat with you. If you have questions on this, ask me how we do it at Stories. And I'll tell you some of our, trip, you know, our tips and tricks. We've figured our solution out for the last decade to be objective about our work. And I'd love to share that with you. Yeah? Let's move on to competition. Where does competition fit in? Last five minutes. I think uh, for all those people who tell me that competition is such a big thing, a stressful, worrying thing, they dictate terms, they run my city, you don't know how my city, Bangalore is, you don't know where you come from, you don't know Okay, well, well sorted, okay. But there's something to be learned from it, right? Here's my take on this, and I love uh, charts and graphs and graphical imagery, so this is my construction. I like telling the Exito guys that the stuff I present is not out of a textbook, so this is definitely not out of a textbook. It's definitely not from anywhere online. So brand new, for the first time, you're seeing a new slide um, on this idea of orbital velocity. I believe that every industry has certain norms for a segment. When I say segment, I mean uh, Rakhiri, for example. I would say Hyderabad, 200 guest wedding. Uh, needs to be shot. Let me talk in photography terms, right? They need three photographers, three candid photographers, I don't know, the, the other terms. I need three videographers, that sort of thing. Every industry has certain norms for a segment, yeah? And there's an orbit around it on which everybody is rotating, okay? That's where the competition lives. When you start out in your industry, when you start out in your business, uh, my friend here, what's your name? Prerna. Prerna, right? Uh, what are you starting out in? Deco. Prerna is starting out in Deco. When she starts out, she has to play the same game as everyone else. Is that fair? She has to be on the same orbit as everyone else. And when she's on that orbit, her price is fixed. But more importantly, her product quality is also fixed. Because for that segment, for that price, you can only offer that much quality. This is good? Are you all with me? Does it sound familiar? When you start out, you end up doing literally what the competition does and you're literally offering the same parity service, parity product. The problem is not this. There is no harm. There's no shame in this. There's no harm in this. The problem comes when five years from now, I meet you at EWPC edition number 276. I don't know which one, you know, uh, they have a, a step count that doesn't keep up with the number of years that are in operation. So this, this 10 will become some 200th edition. When I see you, the problem will be in four to five years, if you're still on the same orbit, you have a problem. You have the idli problem, where your price for the idli has not changed. Yeah. In five years, this is what should be happening. You need to actually get escape velocity. What does it look like? In five years, yes, there are still industry norms for the segment. There is still competition. There is more competition now. You can see it's doubled in five years. But I want Prerna to do this. You all want Prerna to do this? Yes. Wow, that's a really weak yes, man. I'm supporting you. Okay, good. We want Prerna to, escape, to achieve escape velocity. How is she going to do that? She's going to have to do a bunch of these things. She's going to have to differentiate her product. She's going to have to differentiate her story. She's going to have to differentiate her service quality. She'll have to differentiate her stated ambition. I want to be X. When everybody else wants to be Y, I want to be X. Uh, that is how she's going to end up with an escape velocity for price. Here's an example from my life. I don't want to give you gyan. I'll tell you what I did. Six years ago, when Stories was faced with an option to continue to provide wedding photography and wedding videography under the same umbrella, my sales team is sitting here. They told me I was a fool. They told me I was an idiot. Uh, 
I said we will stop doing wedding videography because by doing photo and video together, it's very easy to compare us with everybody else. We are playing the orbital velocity game with everyone in the industry. So what are we going to do? We are going to go on our own tangent. We are going to escape this by becoming wedding photographers alone. They told me, they gave me 10 reasons why it won't work. Planners won't hire you. Planners want a simple solution. Who wants to work with two different teams? Brides won't hire you. Brides and parents won't hire you. It won't make any sense. Well, uh, survivorship bias, but I'm here to tell you that you can actually take a contrarian call, right? When we took that contrary call, we moved into a different orbit where we are the only ones operating. Now there are other players who only purely do photography. They have joined my orbit. So maybe I get to call the shots. Let's see. In the next five years, I have to see which orbit I want to escape to. Does that make any sense? Yeah? So, I'm going to end it on this slide. So we are literally at the last slide. Here's a few thoughts on how to actually get to escape velocity. Yeah? Let me acknowledge that escape velocity is hard. It's very easy to play the same game as everyone else and to charge the same as everyone else. But if you want to charge different and you want a different kind of product, here's three things. One, it's a long game. Nothing is going to happen overnight. Yeah, It's a long game, but the longness of the game is maybe 24 to 36 months to maybe 72 months. You have to have a plan for the next so many months and it's not going to happen overnight. If Prerna goes to a client tomorrow and says, I charge you 100 rupees yesterday, today it is 200 rupees. I have decided. It's not going to work. Right? If your goal is to hit 200, you have the next 24 months to work towards it. Yeah? What would that take? What would it take for Prerna to double her price? I think her quality will have to visibly improve, perceptibly visibly improve. I think a lot of businesses get stuck in the sameness. There is no upgrade to price, I say not, but there is no upgrade to price if uh, you're not going to actually visibly improve. I love giving the example of the iPhone because as much as we think it's about brand and perception, the iPhone has improved over the last 10 years. As a photographer, I can tell you it's improved. And with each upgrade, I have been willing to pay a bigger price, right? So I did the calculation of the iPhone's price trajectory in India. I went to radium.com, nobody goes there now. But I found out just, just to find out what the first iPhone was charged at, 30,000 rupees. The latest iPhone has come out, the 14 Pro Max in the one terabyte version with Apple Care is 2.18 lakhs. That is, what is that? That's about seven times in what? In like just over 10 years. How many of you want your price to go up seven times in 10 years? That's it? That's it. Nobody else? Even more, more than that, actually, that's what I said. more than that, that's fantastic. Okay, we'll talk after the session. I want to know what you want to do for that, yeah? But to get there, your quality and your story has to visibly improve. Yeah, sorry, to get there, your quality and your story has to visibly improve. And finally, the last point, it will take tons of courage. Um, I love meeting people who are not entrepreneurs, who are still doing their safe desk jobs, and they come over and say, I think it's very courageous that you quit your job to do this. I tell them that's only the start of it. There's so much more courage to really get success in life. And one of the courageous things you will do in life is to play the game of the escape velocity and not get stuck orbiting someone else's dream. So let me close by telling you that if you've been paying attention, it is inescapable that price is a product story. Yeah, this is the thought I want to leave you with and next time I meet you, I don't know if it's in a year, two years, or six months, I'd love to know what you guys have done to implement this in your own firm, in your own brand, with your own products and services. Better leads to more, so I guess do better. I'm going to end it with uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, lines from the Bible. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, even if it's just wedding photography. It's just wedding photography, man. The previous uh, presentation was exciting. The GRT thing with all the skit and the street play, they all came over here and they spoke about it. The thing that stood out for me is, man, I wish those photos were better. Because those photos would have told a much better story. So we take this uh, as a challenge, saying whatever we are given to do, we want to do it with all our heart. I'm sure you do it already, but that's a good reminder for today. That's it. Thank you. Talk to us. Uh, talk to the people around you. there wasn't that much of a gap between the industry veterans and the rest of us who are starting out right now. There is no gap. Please walk up and talk to us. We're here to help. 
the reason we participate in, in events like this is because we want to share and we want to be part of your story as well. You're not alone. Find me on Instagram at, at Joshua Kartikar. Thank you. That's been it. Thanks a lot.